This is Late Night Health. This is the radio show that cares about the most important part of your life, your health. Hi, I'm Mark Allen. During the next two hours, we're going to talk about everything from silliness with the insane Daryl Wayne and me. Hey. 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 What was it? Not silly. Yeah. Of course. Of course. So we'll wrap the show up with that. But we're going to be talking about all kinds of things. Iodine, anti-aging, and and we'll also be spending some time with Dr. Earl Mandel, who hasn't been on for a while. He's got a brand new book out called uh, The Happiness Effect. And we start with our friend that we have neglected for probably a year, Ken Redcross. Ken, Dr. Ken, uh, welcome back to Late Night Health. Thank you, Mark. Thank you for no longer neglecting me. I feel loved and wanted. Thank you. You you are. Actually, I was in New York recently, and I mentioned you. Um, I was in Manhattan. How far out of Manhattan are you based? Oh, gosh. about Only about 10 to 15 minutes. I'm right outside the city. New Rochelle, Westchester. I've got to uh, hook you up with uh, a friend of mine who is looking, you know, occasionally for a doc. Oh, I would love that. I would love to be able to share some time with him. So by all means, feel free to share my information, Mark. I will do that. Um, So we're going to talk about a number of things. But before we do, we're going to talk about um, male infertility and pregnancy preparedness. But I wanted to ask about your overall viewpoint of medicine. Would you say that you're more of an integrative doctor today than a by-the-book internist? No, I, I'd actually have to be honest and say I've probably been converted. I, You know, I, I trained here in Columbia, so I bled Columbia blue, and I still do, but when I came out to California, Mark, I was able to kind of shift gears, and I learned there was a lot of alternative ways to healing. And so since that time, my practice has changed tremendously. I'm no longer that kind of straight and narrow doc. We talk about a lot of wonderful things in the office, which are very sometimes spiritually based, sometimes uh, homeopathy, a lot of different things. So I'd say now I'm like a nice, perfect mix and balance. So you are an integrative specialist. Well, yeah, you know, it's interesting because I'm Western trained, but I've kind of self-taught myself. And and quite honestly, Mark, I've even learned from patients. And I think as docs, when we stop learning from patients, that's when we really run into a lot of trouble and problems. You know, one of the the big problems today is big pharma, to me. Now, I have to say that I have, and I, I have taken pharmaceuticals. I think that they are needed at times. Uh, yeah. But at the same time, there's got to be other ways to combat a situation, whether it's high yeah. blood pressure and all you need to do is go out and walk a little bit, um, watch what you're eating, uh, drop some weight, and your blood pressure comes down. Diabetes goes away rather than yeah, taking I agree. pills. I so agree with you, Mark. And think about it. Even a lot of the formulations that pharma uses to make drugs come from plants. They come from things that we're around every day. And so I agree with you that there's a lot of alternative ways to heal that may not make the most money for pharma. So unfortunately, we may not hear about a lot of them. But you're right. There's a lot of things in our lifestyle that we can do to kind of curb several of the main diseases, such as diabetes and hypertension in particular. You know, uh, in the news right now is something called the Zika virus. Mm -hmm. I guess it's coming up from South America. What can you tell us about the Zika virus to start with? You know, it's funny you mentioned that, Mark, because everyone knows um, about the Zika virus and what's happened in South America and the unfortunate uh, fetal complications that we see with the babies that have microcephaly or small skulls. But actually, the Zika virus has been around since 1940. It was actually first seen in Uganda. Um, And it's so interesting because it's almost these things kind of come almost at the perfect storm or the perfect time when the conditions are perfect for them to propagate themselves. And then now that we're seeing it so much in the news, you're absolutely right. Everything is concentrated around South America and, believe it or not, creeping up through Central America as well. So we here in the United States need to be very, very aware of what the Zika virus is. The key is usually the Zika virus is usually pretty mild. We feel like we have some sort of cold or flu-like symptoms and we get better. But not everyone does, and that's when it causes a problem. And when we've been talking about 
infertility, as we'll touch on today, we're realizing that the Zika virus can actually live in the semen or in the testicles of men for up to six months. Oh, my so the, God. Absolutely, absolutely. So the Zika virus doesn't cause infertility, Mark, but what it can cause is for you to put your family on hold. So that's the reason why I always bring that in to make sure that we're all cognizant that it's something to think about. Well, how do you know if you have the Zika virus? I mean, isn't a virus a virus? Well, no, because the Zika virus has some characteristics. I mean, sometimes patients will complain of um, bone aches, body joint aches. But the bigger thing that you see with a lot of people who have Zika is that you see the conjunctivitis as far as a lot of infection around the eyes. Those are the big things that you see that it's not a typical viral bug. But like I said, most of us kind of fight this off without those complications. But when we don't, it can become a very big issue, and especially for couples who are out there trying to get pregnant. So it's something for them to think about, especially if they feel they have to travel to those areas. You may want to reschedule your trip. Um, and also be careful if you have a partner who's traveling back from there, especially if your partner is a male. And so... Um, these are things that we have to be cognizant of for infertility when we're thinking about environmental hazards. If it's a mild uh, virus, if you're older, can can it affect you more? Yep, the same thing. It's the same sort of um, formula of what happens. You know, those who are younger and those who are older tend to be most affected by these viruses. And it's for the same reason, Mark. It's an immune system issue. When you've been here or you've seen years, as I call my seniors, I always say they've seen years. And when you do, then your immune system is a little bit weaker. And when you're younger, obviously your immune system is just kind of wake up and learning a little bit about what's in the world. Uh, our guest is one of the best-looking uh, uh, medical doctors around. He's been on all kinds of TV shows. Uh, Dr. Ken Redcross, and he's also a good doc. Well, so, the check will be in the mail for you for that one, Mark. Thank you. Please, uh, and spell my name correctly. Uh, what, I'm, what I'm curious about is that, that you know, as you travel and, and, and talk about, uh, you know, health issues, do you ever talk about, GMOs, and what is your take on that? Because I want to tie it back to the Zika virus. Yeah, you know, that's a that's another tough one. So, okay, so as we're talking about GMO, guys, everyone knows GMOs as far as in foods. Um, we're talking about the fact that, you know, some of the foods that we have are genetically modified. I hate them. Um, I don't have any of those, at least in the Red Cross household, and I talk to patients about that because anything that's coming into your body that can possibly rearrange your DNA it's not a good thing. Um, don't forget cancers and some of those diseases come from DNA that has been altered. So I'm not comfortable with that. But I can tell you this. There's some interesting data around the Zika virus and a genetically modified mosquito. Right. That's what so I was going to ask you about. It's, it's actually a, it's amazing science, and we'll see where it goes. So just a quick lesson, probably more about mosquitoes than everyone wants to even hear, but I'll tell you this, the females bite us and the males don't. So what they decided to do was to alter the DNA of several male mosquitoes so that when they mate with the females, when the female lays larva, they're just inert. They don't work. They're duds. So that way that could control the mosquito population, and they're trying to maybe implement that in Florida. Right, and but let me ask important. you something. Here in California with our fruit, food and fruit crops, years ago during um, Governor Brown's uh, former uh, uh, tenure, he used fruit flies. He used sterile mm -hmm. fruit the, flies. The medfly? Are you talking about medfly? Yeah. Yeah. Right. And But they didn't what they did was, I believe they radiated them with x-rays. Right. Okay? Right. Yeah. Which seems to me to be a safer way of of sterilizing the insect for a number of reasons. One, what happens if the stupid mosquito doesn't decide to mate or before it does, bites me? I don't want... Well... First of all, I don't well, want any mosquito to bite me at all, but... We well, don't... you've really touched upon some of the things that are concerning Florida residents. Now, keep in mind, don't forget, the male mosquitoes don't bite us. It's only the females. So that's one thing as far as the researchers. So the researchers, and even the FDA came out and said, you know, we deem this to possibly, and well, not even possibly, but actually probably to be safe. 
because the male mosquitoes would not necessarily infect us. But people living in those areas aren't necessarily convinced. Um, and you're right, that's another thing on the table to eradicate these mosquitoes as well. Uh, is something else that another company is thinking about doing. But you're right. When you're talking about changing DNA, it makes everyone nervous, and, well, and, and nervously so. And, and when the FDA comes out and says, hey, that's safe or probably safe, I right. don't have a lot of confidence in that. Yeah, yeah. And, and most consumers are, are just like you with that. They're kind of iffy, iffy if the FDA is um, being a totally 100% up front. I mean, it's, it, it's not like the FDA has not said, hey, it's safe, take it, it's okay. And then three years later, they say, well, we need some more studies because people have died or gotten very right. ill. Right, and right. I use that argument on Capitol Hill at the uh, NPA lobby day three years ago uh, and um, because the FDA is not perfect. I mean, people aren't perfect. We get that. People make mistakes. But these exactly. are mistakes that can cost lives. Uh, our guest is uh, really a good guy. His name is Ken Red Cross. He's a medical doctor. He has a unique concierge practice, and he talks about all kinds of things, uh, including pregnancy preparedness. And we're going to talk about sex and Hot things like that coming up here on Late Night Health. Don't go away. Join us at LateNightHealth.com, LateNightHealth.com, and be sure to sign up for our newsletter. It's coming back. It'll be back next week. I'm Mark Allen, along with the insane Daryl Wayne. We'll be back.